Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, December 6th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, December 7th. We're still working off being overbought and extreme positive, but there are some signs of weakness starting to come in. We have to respect that. We are in a positive time seasonally, but it doesn't mean that right now is necessarily positive from a seasonal basis. Looking at all these different charts, sometimes we see some pullbacks, but it's later in the month when things do, historically anyway, turn more positive. But then there's the other side of that saying, well, everybody thinks that we're going to have the January effect, that the end of the year, it's a pre-election year, all these things are going to happen. And when you assume things like that, sometimes the market has a real knack of changing it and going in the other direction. Not saying that's what will happen, but we have to be aware of that at all times. So let's go back and talk about what happened. We did have a higher open. We gapped higher above R1 at 45.80. We didn't quite get up to R2 at 45.93. Then we started to decline down to the unchanged level. We went down to the daily pivot at 45.66. Then as the day went on, we still remain negative. We tried to get up to the unchanged level again, but that just didn't break through. We fell below S1 at 45.53, and we closed at the daily low. So a lot of the selling that we saw came later in the session. We were down 0.39%. So we're not seeing huge percentage moves right now. We're just seeing some real jockeying around, and a lot of the action intraday is very choppy. We were still above average with volume. In our technicals, we are still positive in the short and intermediate term. But if we see some significant downward movement and starting to break below support that I'll point out in the charts, that could switch things more negative. And we have one influential indicator that is also starting to flash some negative signs. It's about inflation, interest rates, growth concerns. We have weekly jobless claims coming out in Thursday's session. We're going to get the big employment situation report on Friday. Those can both be very influential. We do have some more employment data to go through here. We're keeping an eye on what's going on in Israel and all the different geopolitical events that are happening. What are some comments? The mega caps were back to underperforming in Wednesday's session. Okay, well, they were a little bit better in Tuesday's session, but they've been weak in Monday and Wednesday's session. Oil did close down. We dropped down below 70. So I'm probably going to take this off the list. It can come back at any time. We've been watching this mainly from a geopolitical standpoint. And when oil really shot up a month or so ago, after the whole geopolitical event started to happen in Israel, that was having a real influence on the market. Well, now we're kind of drifting down and the market is not really making that a point of focus, at least for right now. But we did close down at $69.37. The parabolic SER, this is the influential indicator. This is one that I put a lot of importance on. We have turned negative. The dot is now gone on top of the bar. I'll show you that chart. On a short-term basis, we still have some things that are extreme positive. We have the short-term ADX chart, and that's still above 40. The stochastics are starting to turn back down, but our longer-term stochastics is still extreme positive. The PMO is still looking extreme, but starting to roll over. And the slope oscillator continues to decline below its moving average, but it's still giving us an extreme positive reading. Intermediate term, or I'm sorry, in the short term, with the oversold, we have the Stoke RSI. It went from being extreme positive to extreme negative in one day with the additional down day that we had. That remains extreme negative. Now the intermediate term. We have our PMO studies, the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. It's still hanging out in that extreme positive territory. And then our 10 period study of the new highs and new lows for the S&P 500. We're still working through this same scenario. We're going through that the Fed is keeping rates higher for longer. That's already been happening. That's part of an established Fed policy that they've been putting out there. The speculation comes, where do we go from here? Are they done raising rates? Are they even considering cutting rates at some point? We don't know that yet. And that's what the market is battling back and forth, trying to figure out. Some days it looks like, okay, we're going to go up because we think the Fed is going to cut rates off into the future. Or if we get some strong economic reports, we could really go down because now the market is afraid that 
number one, that they'll keep rates higher for longer, which is what they're doing now, and that they may not necessarily have to be able to cut rates. And if we get some strong economic reports, they may even have to go back and consider raising rates. The dollar was up and interest rates were down. Now, the dollar wasn't all that much changed in Wednesday's session, but interest rates coming down, that should have given some support to stocks, and it really didn't do that. The 10-year to the two-year and the 10-year to the three-month, those yield curves are still inverted. They've been that way for, what, a year and a half now? So I say this every day. I kind of just throw it off as a statement. But to stay this inverted for this long is not necessarily a common thing to have happen. Sentiment is still positive. We did tick down with the downward movement in the index. We were at 67, where we're still positive, but we're down to 63 now. And our trend is still positive. The green line is still on top, even though it's coming down. We are in a trending environment because the ADX is above its moving average. Our bias is negative because we've had a number of down days now, even though they've been less than 1%. And I've switched our momentum over to mixed now. We had been more positive. Now with these down days in a row, we can't be as positive about things. The economic reports that came out, every week we get the weekly MBA Mortgage Applications Index. It was up 2.8%. Last week it was up 0.3%. This was kind of a big one, and this could have given some support to the markets. It was the ADP employment change. It came in less than expected at 103,000. They had expected 127,000. Last time we had this report, it came in up 106,000. And one thing to make note of is the prior month, they revised it. The first number that we got was 113,000. They revised it down to 106,000. This is weaker than expected. And the market should have latched onto this and been able to go a little bit higher. And that's why we did see the gap higher open. But there's still a lot of variables out there, specifically what is the report for the employment situation going to be on Friday. The third quarter of productivity, the last number that we get came in at 5.2%. That was up from the 4.8% that they had expected. Last time it came in up 4.7%. The unit labor costs were down 1.2%. They had expected it to be down 0.8%. So this was weaker than expected. Last time it was down 0.8%. So think about this. And I have a chart to show you. Productivity is going up. So they're getting more out of employees, but the costs are coming down. That could help the economy. The trade balance came in at a minus 64.3 billion. That was a little bit less than the minus 64.4 billion that they thought would come out. And last time it was down or a minus 61.2 billion. Here are some charts. Here's the mortgage applications index. I don't have the refi and new mortgages to show you this time. I just wanted to show on a week over week basis how we did climb 2.8%. Here is the ADP employment change where we've been flattening out a little bit here, but this did come in less than what was expected. And then here's the productivity and unit labor costs where we're seeing productivity going up. That's the blue line. And we're seeing employing unit labor costs coming down. Okay. Now, if you own a company, you like this because it's costing you less to produce more. Then looking at the monthly nominal trade balance where we're flattening out just a little bit here, but it's still negative and has been negative for ever since I can remember we did drop a little bit with the 10-year yield down to 4.12%. We're inching our way back down to that 4.02%. Can we even get there? Because when we're above the 4.02% level, that's when RENMAC has determined that it starts biting into corporate profits. Here's our intraday chart where we gapped higher and we shot up and we set the high right after the open. We never quite made it up to R2. And then we pretty much spent the rest of the day coming down. We fell down below R1. We came down to the unchanged level, chopped around here. The daily pivot tried to provide some kind of support, but then we ended up falling through that later in the day, going down and actually broke below S1 and closed pretty much at the low for the session. Here's the intraday chart. We were looking pretty positive right off the bat and then spent the rest of the day coming down. We're down just a little bit in the initial overnight session. We're still seeing where growth is underperforming value. Blue line is growth, and that was the down. 
Value is also down, but you notice the red lines on top of the blue line, even though these are on slightly different scales. Looking at the intraday chart of S&P growth to value, we were negative. We had a little bit of hope in yesterday's session where this really spiked up and was able to hold on to its gains. Well, it gave about half of those back. So this isn't performing all that well right now. Here's our end of day look where both growth and value were down, but growth was down more. Also, we were down more with the mid caps and we were down more with the small caps. And the end of day, we're seeing this really trilling off. When we look at our S&P 500 growth to value ratio, the index had been going up. We're seeing this ratio going down. To me, that's a negative divergence. We want to see these confirming each other. Then we look at discretionary and staples with an equal weight ETF. And then on the bottom, we did see where the ratio actually is breaking out a little bit. That could be somewhat positive. Keeping an eye on our trend, we're still going up above the moving average with the ADX. So that's suggesting that we're in a trending environment. The green line is still on top, even though it's coming down, so we default to positive. In the short term, we're just continuing to go up with our short-term ADX. We're getting further above the 40 level. We have not even really tried to turn back down yet, but we're still positive because the green line is on top, even though it is declining. We're kind of at the, about the average level now with volume. It's been picking back up a little bit here and there. Keeping an eye on sentiment, we're wondering if we're in this choppy period in December with the VIX. When it's going up, that means stocks are going down before we can finally break out of that more in the middle part of December and see the VIX start to come down. Now, a lot of people are watching this and a lot of people are assuming this is going to happen. And so, you know what happens? We, we don't want to take anything for granted when it comes to the stock market. The ELSER index turned up just a little bit, but shows that fear is very low. And when we look at the line chart of the VIX, we were pretty much flat and we were pretty much flat as well with the bar chart. Volatility of the VIX is dropping off. We closed up just a little bit on a closing basis, but the bar actually showed that we were going down. That's why I, I plot both of these because sometimes the closing value can look different than what we see within the bar chart. The VIX to VVIX ratio, this is still looking positive. It's declining and that can give support to stocks. We're also seeing the VIX to the three-month average of the VIX continue to decline. That's also positive. The VIX to move ratio ticked up just a little bit, but it's really going down as there's just not a lot of fear in the market. The one-day version of the equity put call ratio, we did come up since we had a down day. And when we look at our five period, we came right down to this red line and we ticked up just a little bit. So for right now, though, the trend of this has been down and that's positive for stocks. If we see more weakness in the market, we might start to see this ratio go back up. And longer term, we came almost down to this line and we haven't quite crossed over to an extreme negative reading, at least yet. The longer term equity put call ratio continues to decline. That's longer term positive. We continue to decline with this fear gauge that we follow and we ticked up just a little bit with the other fear gauge. So we're seeing some differences when we try to measure sentiment. Looking at the risk on to risk off ratio, we did tick down just a little bit. The bigger picture is that we've been declining. We've been trying to bounce back up, but we haven't turned over positive yet. Our advanced decline line, we turned down just a little bit based on price and volume, but we're still above the moving averages. We're flattening out with our five period, declining slightly with our 10 period. We did see a pickup in the new highs and no real expansion in new lows. So this is still staying healthy, meaning that inside of the S&P 500, things are still remaining rather bullish. We declined a little bit with our advanced decline ratio, both with the blue line and the red line, and we're still above zero. So this remains positive. Accumulation distribution did turn down, but it's still above the moving average. So it's showing some shorter term weakness, but it's still positive. The check in money flow did decline and the red moving average continues to decline as well. And we came back down below this previous level where it looks like we were breaking out. Well, we fell back down below that. We're also seeing some weakness here with our regular NYSE advanced decline line. We turned down just a little bit with our other NYSE advanced decline line. So when we look at our advanced decline line studies, we declined with the NYSE common stock. We were actually up slightly with the S&P 500. We were flat with the mid caps and flat to slightly down with the small caps. So we're still pretty much chopping sideways here, but we're getting to the lower end of this recent range that we've been in. If we fall down below that, 
that could turn things more negative. If we can get back up into the higher part of this range, that would at least maintain more of a positive stance. On the bottom, we see where volume ticked up a little bit above the moving average. Here's our Stoke RSI, which has now been extreme negative for two days. The force index is still positive, but it is declining, and the midpoint is also turning down. In the short term, our stochastics are no longer extreme. Our intermediate term, no longer extreme. We're flat to starting to roll over with our long-term stochastics chart. And we're still back up in this plus two standard deviation. We've been chopping sideways and coming down just a little bit here. If we get back into the plus one standard deviation, we're not really concerned as much with the plus two, but that doesn't give us much room to go up if we go to the upside here. It'd be kind of nice if we could get down to the plus one area before we see things turn more positive, if that's what's going to happen. Intermediate turn, the balance of power is declining, but still above the midpoint. The go no go system is still positive with dark blue bars. We're still above the midpoint, and the midpoint is advancing with our highest high value, even though we've been chopping sideways. The TTM squeeze is no longer extreme positive. It's positive now because it's blue, but since it's the darker blue, that's a, more of a negative stance in the short term. The ease of movement is declining, but it's still above zero. The Arun indicator, after getting a little bit extreme positive, we're starting to come back down. And we're still advancing with the summation index based on price. We're starting to roll over based on volume. And remember, these are two different indicators. Sometimes volume can be a leading indicator for us. But when we look at the NYSE summation index based on price and volume, we continue to advance. The Swinlin trading oscillator is still declining based on price and volume. And the PMO is rolling over after giving us an extreme positive reading, but it hasn't crossed below its moving average. We're starting to roll over based on price and volume, but we haven't crossed the moving average yet. We're no longer extreme with the PMOs that are rising. We're coming down with the buy signals. We're still just a little bit extreme where we remain extreme with the PMOs that are above zero. We continue to be neutral with the Elder's Impulse system for the S&P. This is the big change. We've been seeing dots underneath with the parabolic SCR. Now with the down day, we're seeing a dot on top. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to have to stay this way for a long time, but sometimes this can end up being a pretty influential signal. So we want to be aware of that. We are declining with the slope oscillator and we're still above this green line. So even though we're going down, it's still extreme positive. The MACD is now crossing below its moving average. That's turning more negative in the intermediate term. So with the slope, we are declining, but still extreme. We're rolling over with the TSI. We're crossing negative with the MACD. Haven't quite crossed yet with the PMO. We are crossing negative with the PPO, rolling over with the tricks, and we're starting to cross below the moving average with the KST. So we're seeing a more mixed picture here. But when you look at our moving averages, we still remain above all of the plotted moving averages. Bullish percent index, this has been a positive thing that's kind of hung in there as we've been chopping around. We were down just a little bit with this indicator and we've not become extreme positive. That's when we break above 70, but so far this has been holding up. We're also looking okay with the NYSE bullish percent index. We're above 50 and advancing even though we were pretty much flat. The NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is declining a bit, but still giving us an extreme positive reading. If we do drop down below 70, that would be more or less a sell signal. The chicken oscillator is now declining, but we're still above zero. The money flow continues to decline, but it's still above 50. The ultimate oscillator, the same thing, declining and above 50. The vortex has really been coming down with the green line. We're coming up a little bit with the red line. So we've worked off this extreme positive reading that we had not very long ago. We're no longer extreme with the RSI 9 and 14. And on balance volume, even though it's declining, it's still above an advancing moving average. We ticked up just a little bit with the 200 period moving average study where we declined a little bit with the 50 period moving average study for stocks in the S&P. And looking at our trend line, we're still hanging out above this previous high here. This support level has been holding to this point. Can that continue? If we do close down below that, that's going to shift a lot of our indicators more negative. 
But what's going to be even more important is the closing value. We can come down here, but if we close back above it, that means support has held. If we come down here and close below it, then that's when things are going to shift and look more negative. Our different charts, we're still chopping more or less sideways with the hike in Ashy. We're still positive with the Kegi, but we're pointing down. The Ranko chart is still positive. We're starting to see some weakness with the three-line break. It has a dark colored candle here now. I don't have any long-term charts right now. We're kind of focusing on the short term until the market can work out what's really happening. Our different indexes, we were up slightly with the equal weight. We were down slightly with the S&P because the equal weight index outperformed slightly. But longer term, the equal weight index is underperforming the S&P. And we're chopping around a little bit with our ratio here. We actually went up a little bit with this ratio. So it just means that the broader market did a little bit better than the mega caps. We declined with the Dow and the transports where we were up with utilities. And the transports continue to underperform the Dow. The red line is underneath the black line. And we're not really seeing any improvement here with the transports to S&P 500 ratio. We saw this really spike up in the last couple of days. It's been coming back down. The Dow is now going more or less sideways after it had a nice little run up. And we remain neutral for the diamonds. That's the Dow, the ETF for the Dow. And we're chopping more or less sideways with the NASDAQ, but we're coming now down to the bottom part of this range. We were down a little bit more than a half a percent in Wednesday's session. We were down a little bit more than a half a percent with the NASDAQ 100. We're coming down more into this range that we've been in. And we've actually switched to negative with the QQQs for the Elder's Impulse system. And we're turning negative on a momentum basis. This is the PPO. We've crossed back below the moving average, and it is now declining. The small caps, after really having this nice run-up, now they're another day of giving this back. Not very much, down 0.2%. But we really want to see this start to go up. And it's it goes up, and then it comes down. Where we're still declining with the RSI, with the Russell, Smooth, Russell 2000 small cap index, we want to watch this resistance level if you're really following the small caps right now. This was support, then it was resistance, now it's acting as resistance again. We want to get above this and close above this to turn a little more positive. However, we're still working with a longer term downtrend, but the MACD on a shorter term basis continues to be positive. And we still remain neutral for the small caps when looking at the elders impulse system. The mid caps also starting to chop sideways and closing down near the lower end of this really recent range. And we remain neutral for the mid caps. The financial sector, which has been seeing some nice strength, has now seen a couple of down days, but we're still working off of a recent golden cross. We're still above 100 with the micro caps and they were virtually unchanged. The FANG index was down a little bit over a percent. It's starting to kind of drift a little bit lower, but longer term, it's above the 50 period moving average and we're in a longer term uptrend because we can't seem to get back up to this previous high here and end up setting a new all-time high with the FANG index. The dollar was up just a little bit and we still are in a longer term uptrend, even though we've been seeing some recent weakness with the dollar. We were down again with the 10-year yield. We were up again based on price. We're starting to climb back above the 200-day moving average. And we're still looking out of sorts here with the one month subtracting the three-month yield. We're at positive 0.09 right now. That just means something weird is going on because this is not normal, but this has been going on for about a week now. An update of our possible positive scenarios, looking at the growth to value ratio between the Qs and the S&P, we're dropping further below the moving average. We did see some improvement with discretionary to the S&P, and we're coming back up to the moving average when we look at large cap growth versus large cap value. So we're seeing a little bit of an improvement with the large caps, some more weakness with the mid caps, and we're declining to flat with the small caps. We're still hanging out in the upper extreme region of the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We've been up here for over a week now. And looking at the broad market, the Amex, NASDAQ, and NYSE, and taking a five-period moving average of the highs minus the lows, we continue to be positive. And this could be positive in the broader market. This is also continuing to improve. The 50-period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the lows, this red line continues to go up. 
because the red line here, which is the moving average, it's a going up because the black line, which is the indicator, is still positive. We're coming down. The two-year Treasury yield was up a little bit in Wednesday's session, but overall it has been declining. So far, it has not been giving any support to the S&P. I still have not received the free email research from Tom Bally yet. So what's our outlook for Thursday? Still dealing with earnings as they are coming out, still dealing with the geopolitical events that are happening and could escalate and have some impact on the market at any given time. Our technicals are still positive right now. We're kind of in that in-between area. Are we working off being overbought or is weakness starting to develop, which will eventually turn over and look more negative? We will get the weekly jobless claims, wholesale inventories, consumer credit, and then keeping an eye on all the different geopolitical events. Here's the economic calendar. The big report will be coming out on Friday for the employment situation. Seasonality for December 7th. We're fairly positive. The Dow is straight positive, where the S&P and NASDAQ are neutral to positive for December 7th. Then we're wondering if the January effect is going to happen. Now, even when we do have the January effect, you notice how this doesn't go straight up. There are periods of weakness. And there might be enough weakness that generates in the market just to have folks doubt enough to say, oh, it's not going to happen this time. That's about the time when we bottom out and turn around and start going the other way. Remember, the market likes to play mind tricks. It's not an automatic cash machine. You have to struggle to figure out what's really going on and then even though your emotions might tell you something different, we have to go with what we're seeing in our charts. We will be on the fifth trading day of the month where we're flat to slightly positive during a pre-election year. That's the green dash line. And we'll be on the seventh here where this, according to Carson, we do see some positive movement here. Now be aware that after we get through this period, this is when Carson has developed some weakness going up until about the middle of the month. We will be on Thursday where for 2023, we have been up on most Thursdays, but we don't perform as well as we do on Mondays and Fridays. And then we're wondering still during a pre-election year where the current president is running for re-election, are we coming into this downward movement time in December? We also see some sideways to downward movement here with this seasonal chart and a little bit of downward movement here with this other seasonal chart and some downward movement and some real choppiness in this chart. And we wonder, are we going to get beyond this weakness that Carson came up when they post their seasonal chart? And that's why I do this. And I explain this periodically. I want to give you as much seasonal information as I can. I don't use this to make decisions. We use this as a guide. But rather than trying to look out into the future and do all these crazy things, analysis things where you try to figure out what's going to happen six months from now, I would rather look at seasonality. It's not perfect. It makes mistakes. We don't always play things out the same way, but it does give us a, a fairly good foundation, at least to work from, rather than using our emotions or coming up with some kind of conclusion that we may have to retract at some point in the future. Then looking at the equity equity clock, this is a new chart to me here. Are we coming into this time where we do see some weakness, according to their research? Then looking at the Stock Traders Almanac, we tend to hold up fairly well with the NASDAQ during this time, where we might see a little bit of weakness with the S&P. So our scenarios, we can't really go with the down one. Yeah, weakness might be developing. Yeah, we might be working off being overbought, but we don't have any real evidence of that yet coming through in our charts, other than we see the parabolic SAR turning negative. So that is some evidence that we can point to, but still we go with the positive trend for right now, because when we take everything together, things are still looking more positive. We're not going with the sideways trend because both of our ADX charts suggest that we are trending. So the warning signs, we're still keeping an eye on this risk on to risk off ratio. Overall, it's been showing weakness. We see periods of little bouncing up, but we not we don't see much follow through here. Our momentum oscillators, we're starting to get a mixed picture. Some of them are still positive. Some of them are starting to roll over and look more negative. The parabolic SAR chart has now turned negative. The Copic curve, which I'm not going to show that chart for a while now, it has turned negative as well. The Russell, the small caps, and the mid caps are still in downtrends. 
Positive signs, the daily special K charts, rolling over just a little bit, but it's still positive. The longer term equity put call ratio, it actually ticked up a little bit in Wednesday session, but it's declining overall. And we're wondering, is it going to drop down to an extreme negative reading or the longer term equity put call ratio continues to go down? Our oscillators, as I said, are more mixed right now. We're turning more negative with the NASDAQ 100 PPO, and we're seeing a real mixed picture with our S&P 500 oscillators. The vortex indicator is still positive, but that green line is really coming down. The one that's really holding up for right now is the bullish percent index for the S&P 500. It's above 50 and positive and not extreme. Small and mid-cap growth is still chopping sideways, but it's still in a longer-term uptrend. The financial sector has been down the last couple of days, but working off of a recent golden cross. And our longer term 50 period exponential moving average study of the new highs, new lows, it continues to advance. So that's longer term positive. So our conclusion, we are positive, but we're between that point of working off being overbought and then potentially drifting over and turning more negative. Also, I'm wondering, You've got a lot of folks that think, yeah, we're just naturally going to go up. It's December. Is that a seasonal assumption that will end up making fools out of a lot of people? I'm not saying the seasonality is going to go away, but there might be just enough doubt that creeps into the picture to make people questions, question what's happening. The market doesn't like it when participants just make assumptions and then magically think they're going to play out that way. In the short term, we can kind of say that same thing, and that's really where I'm more focused. Where in the intermediate term, it looks like we're still working off being overbought. We're waiting to see if more weakness will start to develop, and that's including the parabolic SAR, where we are still positive in the long term because we're above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.